All right, guys, I'm going to start doing some high tanning here. Um, it's really important early on that you kind of get yourself in the mindset of just what you're trying to accomplish here. You know, um, you want a really nice product in the end, a really nice quality piece of buckskin. Uh, and I think there's certain steps along the way that you have to have to take to ensure that you get to that end point. Um, it's nothing over complicated, nothing really hard, just a little physical. Um, so you don't have to worry about messing anything up because you won't. Um, but what I'm going to be doing is what's commonly known as the wet scrape method or defleshing and dehairing a hide over a beam. Um, and it's my preferred uh, way of tanning hides. It's I feel really manageable for one person to do this with deer hides. Um, and you can work at your convenience and you don't burn yourself out. And You know, it's just the way I've always done it and the way I really enjoy doing so. A couple of resources I really enjoy for anyone else uh, interested in some more information on uh, brain tanning. Um, of course, Matt Richards works on the uh, Deerskins, the Buckskin series. And from a primitive guy's standpoint, the Full Circle DVD by Thad Beckham, I really enjoy that. And in there he has a section on brain tanning. So a lot of what you see me doing will be pulled from those resources. And uh, this is the way I've always done it and the way I enjoy doing it. So I hope you guys uh, have fun and hope you try doing this with me. Now I realize there's a lot of information out there and I could go on and on for hours talking about this stuff. And I really don't want to do that because I <laughs> probably bore everyone. So I'll try to along the way give definite steps that I th feel are really important without overcomplicating anything because there's really nothing hard about this uh, there seems to be a lot of anxiety when it goes to tanning hides like we're like you're gonna mess up the hide or it's gonna go bad you're gonna ruin the whole thing and I used to feel that way too but um, just like I said earlier just don't rush it take your time and everything's gonna work out fine and I think it's really important to start off right so you gotta consider what kind of tools you're gonna use here what you see is a couple different flushing tools. Um, these are actually this one, these two outer ones. These are actual flushing knives. Um, I always use this one. This one's just really nice. It's a heavy uh, knife. It's crooked in the middle. You can see it. That's a flushing knife, and it's wide. It's really, it's really um, comfortable. These are a couple of homemade ones that I didn't make, but I think I bought this one from uh, Braintan.com a long time ago. I've never even used this tool. Uh, this is another one. Uh, the most important thing when considering these tools is you want them to be properly dulled. You don't want them sharp with no chance of cutting your cutting yourself. So you should be able to really well on yourself and not no worry about cutting yourself. You need them dull. Um, of course, you could you could take a hide. You see that all that nasty meat and stuff. And uh, I see a lot of guys will take a you know an actual skinning knife or fillet knife and they'll just work at it and peel this slowly you could do that it's going to take you a really long time and every time you touch this with a sharp knife you run the risk of cutting in your hide and that just makes a lot of extra work in the end so I prefer and I think it's worth anyone's while that really wants to consider doing this just to get a tool like this an old draw knife as long as it's dull because you're not going to be you'll see me I'm not going to be cutting meat and flesh off the skin. I'm going to be plowing it off, pushing it off of the dull. And like I said, I always, this one's my favorite. Um, so that's really important. You just have your tool properly dull. And I'm not telling anyone they have to do it like I do it. You can do it however you want. But I just find this to be the most efficient, quickest way possible to, to start the whole thing off. Um, for you bushcrafters out there, I was thinking about this the other night. And uh, all I did here was uh, square out a little log, and I'm going to see if this is going to work as a as a flusher. You know, you have a sharp edge on each side, and as this thing dulls, you can just keep rotating it. So I thought that that would be fun to try. And my 500-year-old uh, counterpart here is handing me um, some looks like an antler wedge and uh, a leg, uh, deer leg bone. And I don't really know how he's going to do it yet, but he's going to try to tan a hide along with me using AVO tools and limited resources. So that should be interesting to see. I'm kind of skeptical. So um, I'm going to try to get this whole thing started and try not to completely bore everyone. 
because I can go, I could ramble a lot with this whole thing. So, all right, stick. All right, so I typically wear a plastic garbage bag poncho so I don't get full of slime and stuff. I'm going to try to zoom this in. I mean, it's really hard to capture everything. But this is my fleshing beam. It's PVC. That's why I use in a modern setup. Uh, I really like PVC. You don't have to worry about wood. That'll chip out and wear out over time. It stays smooth and it's really nice and convenient. So really important when you uh, are making a beam or if you're going to decide to use a beam, you want it to hit you right about the belly button. Um, and you want it at a comfortable angle. And you want it secure. Uh, if this is bouncing a lot around all over, you're going to lose a lot of energy that you want to put in the hide. So you want this to be as sturdy as possible without any bounce. This has a little bit more bounce than I like, but it's solid enough. It'll do the trick. All right. Uh, so, if you're really nasty hide at this point, uh, this thing is covered in meat. Really big chunks too. If you're really careful when you're butchering a deer or skinning it, you don't have to have this much junk on it, but in this case there is. Like I said, I picked these all up at a processor. So I don't know what I'm gonna find along the way, but uh, you can see there's really big chunks of fat, and you can definitely reuse this. I still wanna make some soap and candles eventually. I always say that and I end up throwing all my fat away. But get yourself your knife like I said this was cheap too by the way I think they paid like 20 bucks for this and uh, you pinch your hide you pinch it so you hold it secure between your stomach and the beam and there's no trick to it you just get physical and you start plowing plowing all this fat and meat off I should mention you know if you just if you just skinned your animal if you just took it off the animal you can go right to this, you don't have to worry about it. I had some salt on the side. I just threw it in water overnight just so there wouldn't be salt splashing up in my eyes. And just so I kind of returned the hide back to how it was. Just uh, rehydrated it a little bit and washed all the salt off. But if you just skin this off the animal, don't worry about it. You can go right to this step. Nothing to it. And I'm just going to start working here. And typically I work from the center of the hide out. Because um, it's easy as you rotate it, you just naturally do that. Um, so I'll try to zoom in too to see if you can see what I'm doing. Okay, that's zoomed in. So, I'm going to start rotating this. You see there's some big chunk of fat there. You pinch it and you just plow it off. That's why I think this is easy because you don't have to worry about cutting anything. You really just have at it. Let out all your aggression. It's a workout. Now, when you get to the edge of the hide, you just plow right off and dig into your beam. Don't worry about stopping. Just plow right off. Right off onto your beam. That gets everything off the fine edge so you don't have a lot of membrane and stuff building up there. You just plow it right off. Sometimes you could just rip some of this off. I want to make sure I'm getting everything. All right, guys. Try not to overcomplicate anything. At this point, you're just getting all the big chunks of meat and fat. Anything where it's raised, there's going to be mem there's going to be mucus on here. Uh, anything that's raised, you're trying to take off. Don't. Don't overthink it. You're not. You're not gonna. You get all the meat and fat off. Big chunks of anything. That's all you're after. There's always gonna be like hair-like mucus all over it um, that you can't really get off with your knife. And don't worry about it. Anything that's raised, meat and fat. If you feel a bump, take it off. That's all there is to it. Don't overthink it. really stinks my camera's dying here I'm trying to get this in the picture all right so I'm moving right along here most important thing not to overthink this 
anything that's raised on the skin, meat, fat, that's all you're after. You run your hand, it's really cold out here, I had to get gloves. You run your hand, if you feel a bump, just take it off, it's probably fat. Anything the knife will take. If there's some fill and mucus, don't worry about that. Just any of the meat and fat, that's all you're after. You just work along here, it's real easy. It takes it right off. Now, you're gonna start to see trauma when you see a lot of blood stain. You know there's a hole coming. Now a hole is something you just want to be careful about. And you can see a hole right here. Hopefully the camera's picking it up. A good way to approach a hole is to come at it from every angle just working into the hole. And I left the big exit hole right here so you can see that. This you have to be real careful with. You work it from every angle just real slow until you're free and clear. And see, you got right past that. Ugh. Yeah, you're good. All right, I'm just gonna film the rest of my camera, guys. Almost done here. I'm timing myself. It's only been about 15 minutes working time on this. It's been cold. I had to go get gloves and stuff. But that's just to give you an idea of how long it should take. It's real quick, real easy, real simple. Nothing to it. So any fat and meat you take off, just plow it right off. Just like that. You don't have to worry about hurting your hide. There's always going to be spots right on the outer edges. You might tear a rip where it gets real thin around the belly and the loins especially. Don't worry about that. There's always going to be, your outer edge might get ripped a little bit. Nothing to get bent ass shape over. So I'll be diligent around the holes in the hide so you don't make them bigger. You just want to get anything off that your knife will take. Just like that. A little bit left here. Some spots might be a little harder. You just work at it. Plow it right off onto your beam. This, just hit right off. And you're good. Generally, I go over the hide when I think I'm all done just to make sure I didn't miss any little pieces of fat. I'm going to stop the camera now before it dies, but that's it. About 20 minutes, and so that's how it should look. Looks a lot different already, a lot cleaner. The last bit of better I have left, I'm going to try my, um, my piece of wood to see how that works as a flesher, just so I know and you all know if it works or not. Would definitely work in a pinch. That would most definitely work. Takes it right off. So that's pretty cool to know.